Um, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited for all you guys to see it. Make some noise for Emily, Sasha, and Differentiation. <laughs> Maybe these are 
five or six. I'm like, okay, I can beat it again. But still, you, you take them to school, you put them on the bus the first time, and, and, then, and then you're just sitting there on the sidewalk crying. <laughs> about having children is that you're just so consumed, so consumed and give so much energy to them that once they get a little bit older and they, they start showing more independence, then all of a sudden you want to spend more time with them because you're so used to giving them all your energy and then they're not there anymore and, and you just don't know what to do with yourself anymore. try to minimize for the public eye all my normal insecurities, they, they don't bother me at all when I'm at home. But there's another part of me, the part that sits right here, the part that's grown bigger and bigger in the past 10 years, and it's, it's just 
they have a little too much fun. <laughs> It's a little too different. It's a little too, bit too big, a little too progressive. And as much as she wants to love me, I don't think that she'll understand it. Have you ever read the book The Da Vinci Code by Charles Silverstein? No? <laughs> it's one of my favorite books. It's a children's book, but it's my favorite. It's about the relationship between this little boy and Tree. And every day, the little boy will come and play with the tree in his leaves. And as the boy gets older, he asks the tree for help in some way. And, and the tree helps him in different ways. She gives him her apples to sell for money. And she gives him her branches to give to him when he's an adult so that he can make a house for his new family. But across time, the boy spends less and less time with the tree even though the tree gives him everything that he needs. And at the very end of the book, the tree is nothing more but an old stump. And the boy, who's an old man now, comes back just looking for a place to sit down because, you know, he's like old or something. <laughs> <laughs> and the tree is just so happy to see him. She's not mad that He's used her all up until she's nothing more than an old stump. She's happy to have given him everything she has and more because she loves him, right? And that's, that's just, that's horrifying. <laughs> Every time I read that story, I cry because it reminds me of my mother. My mother is that tree. She's given every single piece of herself to me, to my brother, to my sister, to my father. She's given every single piece of herself. And for a long time, I thought that that's what love was. And it is for her, at least. And it is so beautiful. But it's also horrifying. Because when you give every single piece of yourself to somebody else, who are you anymore? When I am not me, but I am everything I give to you, I am no one, right? And growing up that way, watching her give that kind of love to my father, even when he would put her down and speak to her harshly, it, it kind of fucked me up a little bit in my romantic relationships. It, I, it makes me afraid to need anybody. Or maybe it, like, fucked me up a lot. I don't know. <laughs> but, um... You know, that's going to be in a different play, because Joe told me I only had eight to nine pages, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess I, I see where she's coming from. I know that she loves me with her whole heart, and she's trying to somehow create this perfect life for me. She's trying to love me in the only way she knows how, by perfecting this, this vision she has in her mind of all the things that she would want if she was me, but she's just not. And sometimes it feels like her energy is this blanket that's sitting on top of me and, and sitting on top of my energy. And I, and I twist and I turn and I, and I shake and I'm just trying to get it off and I, and I just, I can't. And it gets to the point where I just want to scream and I want to say, get off of me. Like, this is too much. It feels like you're sitting on top of me. I need you to get off. Just get away. Get away. Get, get away from me, okay? And that's when I do stupid things like weaponize my coming after her just to create some fucking space. Like, yes, sometimes I date women and I bet that makes you want to get away from me, doesn't it? Ever since I've known you, you've always dated boys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I I shouldn't have said it like that. Um. Yes. I do date men. Um, even though I often find they don't have exactly equal levels of sexual perception. And anyone else who I share a mutual attraction to that doesn't conform to the labels of the gender binary. Is that 
too much. Allison, you are a very special and unique person. And you deserve someone special and unique as well, just as special as you. Maybe you just haven't met the right guy yet. <laughs> you just, you know, maybe you're just looking in the wrong place. It's okay. I, I, I didn't expect her to understand, but at least I told her the truth, right? And I feel better about that. Where should I go meet someone at church? <laughs> yeah, that'll be a great place to start. But I'll send. I, I really hope that you will meet somebody, some, some <laughs> special person. Well, I'm clearly still trying to <laughs> go to that light show or Oh shit! <laughs> Jimmy! Jimmy, come on, we gotta go! Let's go! 